Ben has had numerous other opportunities to become a Division I head coach over the past few years, but he waited for this position to open. He didn't want to be just any Division I head coach. He wanted to be the Drake head coach, and that matters. That matters, and it's why he's a tremendous fit for our campus and our community. Truth be told, I'm sure that Ben would, would uh, certainly prefer to be sitting at a pond right now fishing today. Um, so <laughs> if, if anyone has, has any tips on a place that he can, he can go, I'm sure that would be a, a quick way for you to uh, endear yourself to him. Um, but we're thrilled that Ben, Michelle, Peyton, Tate, Grace could be with us here today. So please help me welcome the 30th head coach in Drake men's basketball history, Ben McCollum. There's any question why the number is three so ben wore number three in college but that was a green and white school so we thought he looked better in blue and white so we got him in new jersey with number three in blue and white yeah well thank you i'm i'm excited to be here um and, and in all seriousness that pond thing um is is a reality so if somebody does have ponds i'm dead serious I, i'm all in on that um, yeah, no, I'm, I fish as often as I can, take my kids and all that. So um, when we took over the program at, at Northwest and, and while we're currently taking over this program here, our objective has always been to make kids successful once they leave the institution. So in every recruiting pitch that we give, it is can we make you better because you played basketball at this institution. And that will be the same here at Drake. So we want to develop, like, he, like um, President Martin said, we want to develop better citizens, better husbands, um, better community members, so that they can go into their community and make their world um, a better world because they were with us. Specific to Drake University, why this opportunity? I've always felt like the jump to Division I is something that, from a challenge perspective, I wanted to make. But we've always kept the first thing first. And the reason we got into college coaching, the reason I got into college coaching, is to make a difference on people's lives and the community surrounding it. For me, being from Iowa, the big community of Des Moines, when they come see our kids play and they see the love they have for each other, and they see how they serve each other, and they see how connected they are, and they see how tough they are. It sends a message that this is how the world should be, and this is how Des Moines should be. And so taking over this specific program, we felt like this would be the best platform to be able to send that message to the Des Moines community and to the entire state of Iowa. So why Drake? That's why. We feel like this is the perfect opportunity to do that. A few things, thank-wise, um, want to make sure that I, I, and I'll keep it fairly short um, and then answer some questions. Um, I, I want to make sure that, obviously, I, I thank uh, Brian Harden uh, and, and President Martin. When, when I interviewed with them the first time, they had a vision. And to be quite honest, I thought they were half crazy, uh, where it was, hey, we want to become, and, and we're not there, uh, but maybe eventually we want to become the Gonzaga of the Midwest. We want to be that competitive throughout. And part of, part of having a vision is you do kind of have to go out there on your own and fight for that vision, and they've done that. And obviously Coach DeVries helped with that, helped get it to that next level so that now we can hopefully leverage some of that momentum and get it to another level to where you're making NCAA tournaments consistently, which they have done, and winning NCAA tournament games, winning conference championships. But most importantly, while you're doing that, developing quality young men that go into the community and, and make a big difference in the community. So thanks to them for giving me that opportunity. Thanks to a lot of the, the donors, the alumni, the former players, for again allowing me the opportunity to lead this program. 
Um, we couldn't be more excited to, to move to Des Moines and, and to see what kind of opportunities there are for our kids, uh, my wife, and, and obviously myself and, and my staff. Uh, I want to make sure that I thank Northwest Missouri State. Um, it's been 15 years, and, and it, was, it was a great 15 years. And when I was 27 years old, the head coach, uh, I was an assistant at Emporia State actually at the time, became the head coach at 27 years old. And uh, a guy named Dr. Bob Bo Richter, and you know, took a risk on an assistant coach. And uh, he said it was the most popular, deci uh, unpopular decision that he's made in his history as an athletic director. <laughs> Ironically, he says it to this day. Uh, moving the tailgate to a certain area, which was unbelievable decision, and hiring Ben McCollum was his two worst decisions from a popularity standpoint. So, heck of a deal. Um, so Northwest Missouri State, all the donors there, um, all the people involved in that program uh, have obviously given us the opportunity to now be able to be at Drake. And, and the former players that, that I've coached there, um, all my assistant coaches, all the managers, I am very thankful for what they've given me. Uh, my former presidents, um, President Jasinski, obviously, President Tatum, uh, my former athletic directors, uh, I just mentioned Bob Bowrichter, and I'm, I'm probably missing some names. So um, making sure that that I thank them for everything that they've given, given to, to us. But um, for Drake, our objective is, is to put out a good product so that you can be proud when we go on the road and we represent Des Moines and we represent who you are as people and what Iowa is. And that's tough, hardworking, connected servants. Um, and, and you're going to see that on the floor. Uh, and, and we're going to be a great representative for Drake. We're going to make a difference on kids' lives. Obviously, from an X's and O's standpoint, we're going to be hopefully pretty good there as well. But um, most importantly, we're going to be a great representative for who you are as people, who Iowa is, and who Des Moines is. So thanks for the opportunity, and uh, I'll open it up to some questions. Yeah, so I think anywhere you go from an organization standpoint, um, you know, no matter if it's a business or if it's athletics, is it is 100% the people. And so how much can you pour into the people in your program, the people above you, et cetera? I don't think because it goes from Division two to Division one that that changes. I think you actually have now more assistant coaches to be able to pour your heart and love on a lot of the players that you have. So the transition to accomplish what we've accomplished, obviously there'll be some conceptual things that um, uh, some some X's and O's things, if you will, that'll change. But conceptually, it's still get the best people and put them in position to be successful. Um, how you attract them may be different. Um, how you coach them may be slightly different, but it's still about loving on them and serving them as much as you can possibly do it. That translates to success uh, quicker than any other X's and O's formula that you may have. Going back to this, yeah, you were obviously successful here in Des Moines. You heard Brian talk about the people who were there at college athletics. You transfer portal and players jumping and Vincent Austin when you come in and not only have to try to maintain what you have but bring in new players. What does that process look like for you and has that started already? That has started already, yep, and, and it, it dominates a lot of my time right now. So it's uh, a lot of sleepless nights, uh, a, a long days of calls, but I, I think we can sit here and complain and get upset as coaches with the transfer portal, or you can embrace it. And, and a lot of it isn't as much the transfer portal as it is the NIL, NIL component to it, where even going back five, six years ago, I've, I've had kids, um, one that ended up going on to Creighton and was all Big East, and another one that probably could have gotten quite a bit of money in NIL. I don't know that in today's area I could have kept some of the most loyal people there are to stay within the program because of the financial situation that presented itself. So I, I think as a, as a program, we're going to embrace that. We're going to embrace the fact that 
if you do have a young man that does perform at a high level, eventually he may move on to that next higher level for a certain, you know, a, a certain criteria of money. So, um, but in regards to, to recruiting right now, we are full go, uh, multiple visits. Um, we're ready to rock. We're going to find good players, and, and we're going to find players that fit. We're going to find tough kids and, and again, kids that, that you guys will be proud of. Coach, right here next to him, John Chu, WHO TV. At Northwest, you had unbelievable success, consistency. Mid-majors sometimes can fluctuate up and down. What's the secret to having maintaining that success and consistency in your program? Uh, again, it probably goes back to the people, one. Two, the second part of that is the process piece of it. So we've always, as I mentioned to start, we've always focused on the success of individuals after they leave. So we say, we're going to win games. We're going to find ways to win championships. We're going to find ways to do those things. We are not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on developing you as human beings. If we focus on that, the results, the championships take care of themselves. So go back to when we won our first conference championship, our first national championship. Success is a lot harder to handle than adversity. But because we focused so much on the process of individual development, a lot of times they didn't drink the poison of what we call it the poison of success. They didn't drink that poison because they weren't so result focused, they were process focused. Did I get a little bit better today? Did I work hard today? Did I love on a teammate today? Did I serve somebody today? And that's all it is, then the results will take care of themselves. And that's the recipe to be able to maintain that high level of success coupled with the fact that I'm fortunate enough to, I've been blessed enough to coach some of the best human beings there are. I mean, we got the, we had the best kids that there are in the, in, in the world. And, and uh, so you're able to have that success and, and continue it. You guys talked about how you were interested in the job before and now interested again. What is it about this job that has made it on your radar that's always gotten for as long as it's been? I think the administration is very connected. So anytime you take a, a new position, you need people that um, really help you be successful. And, and um, Brian and Marty are super connected. They're super aligned in their vision and what they want to accomplish. Um, they're people that even through the process, it's always, there's never a no. It's always, let me see. Let me see if I can find a way. And, and that helps you be successful, one. Two, uh, it's, it's Iowa. It's God's country, right? Uh, <laughs> Isn't that what they say? <laughs> That's not what they say. That's what I say. Um, so when I'm, you know, when I'm living down there in, 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 in Missouri, which I love Missouri too, um, it, it was always, hey, you go another 25 minutes, you're going to feel better about yourself. So, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and then Nebraska people, obviously, but I don't know about Nebraska. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously, and, and just, just, the community of Des Moines and the ability to, to touch a lot of lives. I think, I think that's the big thing that, that we want to make sure early on that we're able to do is, is continue to generate some excitement around the program and really make it Des Moines team and, and make it the, the show in town. Um, and why? Again, because when you see how our kids interact with each other and you see our kids love on each other, that's how you want the world to act. And so it's always about a bigger message. Um, and, and I felt like Des Moines offered that opportunity in Drake. Coach Larry Morgan with uh, Drake TV play by play. You've mentioned several times about players loving each other. When you're building a roster, I know you have to have skills, you have to fill positions, you have to figure out guys who will fit together. But what was your thought process on just trying to build a roster? Well, I got a lot of thoughts on it. It kind of depends on, at this point, it depends on a little bit um, what you can get, meaning I, I think in the transfer portal you have to, uh, you know, Division Two, you kind of get what you get a little bit, meaning once it filters down, then you have to identify talent that might fit that somebody else doesn't value. And so you move up a level, now you can get a little bit more of exactly what you want. And so as we're in that, it's kind of like speed dating. You have to make sure that you, uh, you have to make sure that when you identify an individual that's a transfer, that you can now ask his whole circle 
and get in contact with them as quickly as you can possibly get there and then get as much information about their mentality specifically early in, in a program um, making sure that they have the right mental makeup and you have to do that in a very timely manner uh, simply because the transfer portal is essentially speed dating and then you have to make that not feel transactional and and that's kind of the trick that we're trying to go with um, because we still want to make things transformational rather than a trans transactional decision of hey we'll pay you x amount to come here that's I don't think it's about that. Obviously, their kids will need that stuff, but it's not, it's not what it's about for us. So um, a quick assessment, um, a quick, hey, you gotta touch this person, this person, this person, and then make a decision based on that. Yeah, absolutely. I think some people would say, some people would say you'd want to take over a pro. It's always it's always interesting when coaches, you know, they haven't won in ten years. Take over that program. Why? Like what? <laughs> what? They're still gonna have the same expectations. And so when I, when we took over the program at, at Northwest, I had a former coach that was had been to ten straight national tournaments. Um, his last year was a little bit rougher, but before that, it was as successful a program as there was in Division II. And I don't know, why not take it to another level? That's kind of that's kind of my theory. The, the, the structure's there. Coach DeVries and his staff did an unreal job of building this thing to where now you have to build on the momentum and don't get stalled out. Now it's about kind of keep going, keep going, build on that, leverage some of the success that they've had. I always enjoy asking coaches, I will ask you, the best piece of coaching advice you ever got. BU is a head coach. Um, From? Uh, Brandon Schneider, the KU women's coach. He was at Emporia State when I was there. And I remember walking into his office. This was when I had gotten the job at Northwest. And again, I went from an assistant coach that knew everything to a head coach that absolutely knew nothing. Um, in a day, it was amazing how you didn't have any answers anymore. But. I asked him, I said, what's your greatest advice as a head coach and, and, or for a head coach? And he said, be who you are. I'm like, okay. Um, it did, at the time, it just didn't make sense to me. I, I, I was just like, okay. So I moved on from it two years down the road. So my first season, I tried to be mild head coach, Steve Tapmeyer. Um, and then my second year, I tried to be my other coach, David Moe. And then eventually I was like, okay, we're not very good. I probably should try to be Ben McCollum at this point. And I figured out exactly what he meant. You can do it your way and take different pieces from everybody else, from Steve Tapmeyer, one of the best coaches I've ever been around, um, David Moe. I took bits and pieces, but I still did it my way that last, that third year, and then we were able to win the league. Yeah, um, you know, it's a good question. I, I think it, it had to be the right opportunity like I had shared earlier to where we felt like we could still make a difference on people's lives and the community's lives. And also for me specifically, being closer to home, being in the Midwest is a big deal. Um, why we stayed for so long, I think the success, I don't think the right opportunity came, ar came along. Um, I think we were treated very well. Uh, a lot of different things went into that, but specific to, to this opportunity, why this one is 100%, it is home. Uh, Iowa is home, it is God's country, and, and, um, and, and obviously the ability to, to make a difference on more people's lives because of the network that we're able to touch out here. Any more questions from the media for Ben, Rick Barnett, or Brian? You got a question? Where are you at on team trails? They have talent. Yep. Why is it being taken so long to play the trail? <laughs> That's a great question. I think you need to talk to them. <laughs> See if you can.
See if you, see if you can get that Tucker DeVries kid to stay. <laughs> I, I, I talked to him the other day, and I, I offered him, uh, I think, everybody's salary in this building, and he still wasn't going to stay. No, we're, we're trying. Um, there, there's a few that are, are still around, and, and um, we're still trying. But again, that kind of goes to that transfer portal slash NIL thing, um, where that's why it's important to make sure that we invest in it here um, so that we can retain some of those kids a little bit more consistently. Because, you know, a lot of these kids are getting outlandish offers. Um, not to go into too much detail. So, um, but yeah, I'd love to keep keep a few of them. Uh, we're getting there. Yes, we've got a few. What's that? Uh, possibly, possibly. Not 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 quite sure yet, but possibly. Yes, sir.